Human life, your life, is dependent on plants. The qualities of the seed go beyond sustaining us nutritionally and medicinally. Seed is the foundation of human societies across the world. The National Seed Dialogue and Celebration honored the role of smallholder farmers in maintaining and nurturing the diversity of seed in South Africa and regionally. Despite these farmers having been historically dispossessed by colonialism and whose seed are now being displaced and overridden by corporate seed. Hosted by the African Centre for Biodiversity, thought-provoking dialogues were interspersed with drama, music, exhibitions and sharing of seed and literature. This first session inspired discussions on the current political and social context, globally and in South Africa, and the implications for work on seed sovereignty, smallholder farmers and agroecology. There are some people in government who understand the value of farmers' contribution to biodiversity, to food production, but on the whole, Generally speaking, in terms of national agriculture policy, our government is committed principally to commercial industrial agriculture and believe that the only way that we can produce food and feed burgeoning populations is by large-scale commercial industrial agriculture based on monocrops, including GM crops, the application of toxic agrochemicals, including inorganic fertilizers. So that's very much the Green Revolution mantra. If we look at um, seeds as a, as a landscape, for example, very simply, on the one side we have what is known as the formalized system of seed, um, basically the way that, that government has learned to understand seed over the years, over the generations. Um, this system is also called corporate, it could also be called dominant or industrial, it goes by many names. Um, and then all the other kinds of seed and all the other kind of seed systems kind of have been placed in this binary, so there's this opposition in a way. They're not even open at the national level to entertain diverse farming systems. So we're asking for diversity, we're saying you have to be open to supporting agroecology, at least for small-scale farming. But what they're doing is rather trying to upscale small-scale small farmers into a commercial system where they're going to um, they, they're not going to be able to compete on an equal footing with large-scale commercial farmers who have benefited under apartheid. We're obviously in a time of heightened political volatility in our region. It's not only South Africa. If we look at what's happening in Zimbabwe, we look at what's happening in Zambia, we actually, there's a lot of instability politically. And I think it is very unlikely that the problems that we are facing are going to be resolved in the short term. A lot of these things are, um, they embedded now in our political systems and it's going to take a lot of work really to undo these things. This is likely to lead to policy paralysis, which means that um, there's infighting in the government, there's no way to make um, proper policies that can serve the people of the country or of the region. Um, and there's also weak implementation, and I think we've been experiencing that for a long time. So we can have very nice policies, uh, land reform for example, which actually just don't go anywhere. Our planet is heating, and climate shocks are uh, showing and revealing and exposing increasingly the weaknesses of the corporate controlled food system. They couldn't feed us during this drought. They had to import tons and tons of maize. Okay? We are living through the third global shock on the food system. The first was between 2006 and 2008. It's compromised the food security of 29 million people in southern Africa. The second important point I want to make is that 200,000 people die annually on our planet. It's increasingly being verified by science from chemicals in our dominant corporate-controlled food system. 
The third important point to make is that through unity like this and other initiatives on the ground, the South African Food Sovereignty Campaign being one of them, one of many, we are all affirming one thing in the national conversation in this country, that there's a systemic crisis in the food system and there's a systemic alternative, and we call it food sovereignty. And that discourse is now part of the national conversation in this country. How do we say we're encouraging growth and yet the people who basically should be supporting that growth are not empowered? So we need to be starting addressing our locally based communities into the issues that will basically empower them. It's our public money. That's why we have to work with the state where it's necessary in the way that Vish was talking about. But at the same time, it's clear given the interest that the political center is serving, we have to go beyond the state, building the power of ordinary people, and in ways that make sense, also given that uh, what, what is happening in the global capitalist economy. Then the last point is against the state. There are instances which will require us to really challenge the state in quite a considered way, in quite a powerful way. As, it is, as we have to continue, for example, in the case of the, of, of, of the seed bill that Mariam was referring to. And that battle is not over. But another dimension is, is, is being expressed in Kolobeni, in the platinum belt, where the state is colluding with other capitalists, particularly mining capitalists, to take away land and other natural resources to serve the interests the, the interest of profit. You'll find when you speak to farmers, they lose many varieties. Where, where government programs are directed towards kind of a farm input subsidy, where they subsidize to some extent a hybrid or GM seed, farmers then switch and they stop growing their own seed and they switch to, gr to growing hybrid or GM seed. And then you face erosion of genetic resources. So it threatens biodiversity, which is the very basis for our survival. And in fact, we need more biodiversity, not less. We need, uh, we need to pay attention to the nutritional needs of our people, uh, the fact that People go to bed hungry every night, one in four. We have a lot of obesity, uh, non-communicable diseases. So our food system does not speak to uh, our challenges around unemployment, uh, landlessness, um, the need to increase more, di more biodiversity to overcome the challenges presented by climate change, droughts, floods and also the nutritional requirements of our people. They need diverse diets, not monocrop, you know, a mono diet or uh, dependence on highly processed food that we buy in supermarkets. So what we needed was, you know, we, need, we needed visionaries, people who could have, you know, who, and could embrace new thinking about how we can restructure our food systems so that the majority of South Africans benefit, not a handful of large-scale multinational companies, which is what's happened. Um, they are in total control of our food system. Mm -hmm.